What's up everybody, welcome back. So after the small nightmare we had in the previous episode of trying to fix all the errors with the FX we migrated, we are finally ready to start setting up some things. So in this episode we're going to start working on the muzzle flash, the shell eject and the tracer. And I'm going to use the multiplayer project that we're currently working on on the YouTube channel. But I'm also going to make sure that if you want to add it to your own character, that's not going to be hard either. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, finally, I would like to invite you to become a member of the YouTube channel. You will get access to some premium channels in the Discord as well as some exclusive downloads. And you will get a nice membership badge beside your name. So that's all I got for you guys today. Let's start with the video. So first of all, we're going to make some changes to the character that we are using in the multiplayer project. So if you want to add this to your own character, you can skip on to the part where we're setting up the weapon fired function. I'll, I'll try to make sure that I'll add chapters in the search bar so you can easily navigate uh, through that uh, chapter. The only thing you want to make sure if you set up your fire event for your character in the part where you do your bullet trace, you want to return the traces as an array. So right now I'm not doing that, but we're going to change that. So even if you only have uh, one trace, you want to put it in an array and make sure that the output is an array of hit results. And then in our weapon fired function, we're going to use that to set up our FX. So if you use your own character, you can skip on. And if you want to follow the tutorial with your multiplayer character, then you can keep watching. So let's open our base character. And in here, let's go to the event graph first. In our server fire weapon function over here, we have some calls we are making to the fire weapon events. And this event is actually calling our multicast for fire sound, muzzle flash and montages. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of everything except for the multicast call to the fire montage. And then in our server fire weapon function or event, we're also going to get rid of this call. And then we're going to plug in the multicast right here in between. So that's good to go. Now we can get rid of the multicast play fire sound and the multicast muzzle flash. We don't need those anymore. And now we're going to go into our server bullet trace function. And in here we can also get rid of the multicast to the bullet FX because that's for the uh, tracer and the impact FX. So we're simply going to delete those functions as well. And then we can go back into our bullet trace function and get rid of the calls to that function. Now what we want to do over here is get an array of all of our out hits. So I'm going to make a new local variable. And that's going to be local hit results. And that's an array of hit results. So let's make it an hit result and turn it into an array so then we can simply add all of our hit results to that array so we're going to drag a getter and do add and simply plug in the result from the line trace over here and do the same thing for the shotgun branch so move up and also paste it in here connect everything back up and then we want to make sure that we output our array of hit results. So let's drag it in over here. And we're going to drag it on the output node and let's give it a proper name. There we go. So that should be our server bullet trace function. And now we can set up our new event that's going to handle all the FX for us. So uh, let me see. Let's create a new function for that, not an event. And I'm going to call this server weapon fired. And we're going to give this one input and that's again an array of hit results. So let's make this a hit results. And turn it into an array of hit results. There we go. And we can use this to set up our FX later. So we can go back into the event graph to our server fire weapon function. And in here after the multicast, or we can do it before, that doesn't really matter. So somewhere in between here, we're going to call our new server uh, weapon fired function and plug in the hit result that came back from the bullet trace. 
so that matches up now we need to make sure that we're also going to change our variable types so if we go into our server set weapon cosmetics or uh, set weapon cosmetics not server then we have the muzzle flash fx over here and that should be the only node left so we can make sure find references there's only one left so we're going to delete this one there we go and now we can compile and save this and we're going to go to our weapon info structure so let's go to the weapons folder and open our weapon info structure so in here we have our muzzle flash fx and we want to change it from a particle system to a niagara particle system so search for niagara uh, system and then you want to select the niagara system and then we're also going to add a new variable for the tracer fx so that's also a niagara system so that's good and the last thing we need to add over here is the mesh for the shell eject so we're going to call this our shell eject mesh and that's a static mesh and let me see static mesh over here so just a normal static mesh so this is our new uh, weapon info structure we can save it down and then make sure that in our data table we select the proper variables so let's go to our pistol for example and over here we can set our new muzzle flash fx so this is going to be the weapon fire and then for the shell eject mesh we can search for shell and over here we have the shells so we can select the pistol shell and for the last one that was the tracer fx i'm not sure why that didn't save so let me check that in a little bit so over here we're going to add our weapon fire tracer and that should be good to go so we're going to do this for all of the weapons i'm going to do that off camera to save a little bit of time now let me quickly reopen the weapon structure to see why the name didn't save so i probably didn't put it in there properly or something so tracer fx and that's good so i'm going to set up the rest of my data table and then i'll get back to you so with every variable in my data table stored i'm going to go back into the character to my base character and inside the set weapon cosmetics we need to hook everything back up so first of all let's change the uh, variable type for the uh, muzzle flash fx so let's look for our muzzle flash fx over here so right now it's a particle system and it needs to be a niagara system so change that over here and then we can hook it up back to the data table output and then we also need to make sure that we store the shell eject mesh and the tracer fx so we're going to promote them to new variables our shell eject mesh and our tracer fx and then we can simply hook them up like we did with the rest and that should be good to go so we have everything covered for converting our multiplayer character from the multiplayer series so now we're going to set everything up to make sure our new effects is working so we have our new weapon fired function ready to go we have an array of hit results as an input and we're going to use this to spawn a new blueprint that's going to handle our fx so let's minimize this and go to our weapons folder i'm going to right click and create a new blueprint class and this is going to be an actor so this is going to be a blueprint weapon fx and let's open it up now the first important thing we need to do in the class settings make sure that we set it to replicate so do not forget this one and make sure that's set and now we need to add a bunch of variables first so let's do that we're going to create a new one and the first one is a weapon mesh and that's a skeletal mesh component skeletal mesh component and we need to make sure that we set it instance editable exposed on spawn and also replicated so all three of those need to be set 
And the next thing we need is a muzzle flash FX. And I'm going to duplicate this one because we also need the expose on spawn instance editable and replicated. So I don't need to worry about that. Now I'm going to call this my muzzle flash FX. And that needs to be a Niagara system. And then we're going to go on. We need the tracer FX as well. So we can simply duplicate this again. And that's our tracer FX. So again, this needs to be uh, instance editable, replicated, exposed on spawn. So we need to make sure those are enabled. Then we also need our shell eject mesh. So let's duplicate it again. And this is our shell eject mesh. So this is a static mesh. And that's over here, static mesh. Again, replicated instance editable exposed on spawn. And then we also need uh, two sockets. So our muzzle eject and our shell eject socket. So let's add one muzzle socket. And that's a name variable. Again, enable the settings over here. So I didn't duplicate it. So instance editable exposed on spawn and replicate it. And then we have a shell eject socket as well. And that's good to go with the settings over here. So let me see, we have six variables, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that should be good to go. Now we can dive into the event graph and start setting things up over here. So let me grab my notes quickly. Uh, we can get rid of everything in here and we're going to call uh, create a custom event call this weapon fired and this needs one input so let's do that first give it an input and that's uh, the impact positions array so impact positions and that's an array of vectors so turn it into vector and then an array and we need to set the event itself to be a multicast event. So make sure it's set to multicast. The server is going to call this and then replicate it to all of the clients. So I'm going to promote this to a variable as well. So let's drag off here, promote to variable. And those are my impact positions. That's fine. Then I'm going to grab myself a sequence node. So drag off here, sequence. And the first thing we're going to set up is our muzzle flash FX. So let's make sure um, first we're going to spawn the system. So spawn system attached. This one. And we want to spawn our muzzle flash FX. So we actually have that as a variable and we can drop it right on top of here. We want to attach it to our default scene root. So not to the weapon mesh component over here, but we're simply going to drag the default scene root from the actor over here and drop it on the component. Uh, we do not need an attach point name, but we're going to grab our weapon mesh component over here. And from this, we're going to get a socket to transform. And you want to make sure that you set this to component, so RTS component, and then we're going to plug in our muzzle socket, like so. And then we can break the transform. So break it over here. And all we need is the location, so we're going to plug in the location over here. And if you use the Lyra weapon meshes, you want to set the Z rotation to 90. So that's good as well. We're going to enable auto destroy over here and the rest should be good to go. So with this setup, we're going to promote this to a variable. So drag off here and I'm going to call this my uh, Niagara system muzzle flash. Just like this. Now we're going to drag this new variable in here and we're going to check if this is valid. So is valid. And we also want to drag off here again, and we want to look for is active. So if this is not valid, we can simply go directly to the spawn node. And after that, if this is valid, we're going to add a branch. And we're going to plug in the is active. And if it's not active, we're also going to spawn a new one. So plug that into the spawn actor as well, or the spawn system. 
So we can plug this into the sequence. And then let me see, we need a new variable. So let's create one. And this is going to be the trigger that triggers the system. So I'm going to call this my muzzle flash trigger. And that needs to be a boolean. So let's drag it in and set it to false over here. And then we're going to drag it again with a setter and a getter. And we're going to drag off here and type not. So we're going to flip it around, not boolean. Plug it in here. Set this up like so. So this will make sure that the first time this will always be true. And after that, it will simply flip flop. So it will uh, turn on off, on off, on off. And every time we flip this switch, the uh, Niagara system will be activated. So we don't necessarily need to uh, set it to true. We can also set it to false and that will also trigger the system. Only the first time it will need to be triggered true. So with that set up, uh, we can drag in our muzzle flash component. So that's over here, Niagara system muzzle flash. And we're going to drag off here and set a Niagara variable. And that's going to be a vector tree. So set vector tree. And you want to get the Niagara variable vector tree over here. So we can plug this in. Now for the actual variable name, that's going to be user direction. So this is simply a variable that uh, Epic created on the Niagara system. So they came up with a name for that. I didn't uh, came up with it. So I'm going to paste it over here so you can see it a little bit better. That should be the name with a little dot in between there. So with this setup, uh, we're going to drag in our impact positions over here. And what we want to do is get the first one. So get a copy. And we're going to subtract another vector. So do minus subtract. And then we want to get our uh, socket for the muzzle, uh, the location again. So we can simply copy our weapon mesh muzzle socket get socket transform. And we're going to paste it over here. We're going to break the transform again. And we're going to plug in the location over here. And then we need to normalize this vector. And we can plug it in over here. So that gives us that direction. And then all we need to do is trigger the system. So I'm going to drag off the muzzle flash again. And I'm going to set a variable bool. So just type set bool. And then you want to grab the set Niagara variable bool. And this time we want to set the user trigger. So I'm going to copy and paste it for you guys. So let me see. So user trigger, this one. And we want to plug in our muzzle flash trigger like so. And that should work. So this should be the setup for the muzzle flash. And uh, the reason this is set up like this is because the Niagara system can handle multiple uh, spawns of a system. So if the system is still available, we can simply plug in new variables, trigger it again, and it will still work. So this is the setup for the Niagara system. Uh, I did forget one small thing. Um, well, we can run it like this. That's not really an issue. So we have the muzzle flash set up. Let's continue with the shell eject. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So we can copy like pretty much all of this except for these variables. And that mm, this one also not. Paste it over here. So this time we want to spawn our shell eject. So we can look for the shell eject system over here. There's only one shell eject system. So that's why this is not a variable. Uh, we want to attach it to our default scene root again. So we're going to drag in the default scene root, plug it in over here. Uh, we do need to make sure that we change the muzzle socket for the shell eject socket. So we're going to drag that right on top of here to change that. And the rest of it should be good. So now we can promote this to a new variable. And this is our shell eject component or shell eject. So Niagara system shell eject. And then we need to make sure we plug those back in at the beginning. So 
is valid and is active. And that's good to go. So we can plug this into the second pin of the sequence node. And then we're going to continue over here. So we want to set the shell eject mesh. So we're going to drag off the shell eject system and we're going to set a static mesh variable. So set static mesh. And this one is the user shell eject static mesh. So I'm going to paste it for you guys again. Just a sec. Here we go. So user shell eject static mesh. You want to set that variable. And the actual variable is the shell eject mesh. So we can simply drag it in and plug it in over here. That's good to go. And then we need to do the same trick with the trigger again. So we're going to duplicate our muzzle flash trigger and call this our shell eject trigger. So we're going to drag it in and set it to false over here. And we're going to grab another setter and a getter. Hook up a not boolean for this one and plug it back in. So those are good to go. And now for the shell eject, we don't need to set any other variables. So we can simply call the trigger. So we can drag in our shell eject system and set a variable by bool. Niagara variable bool. And this time you want to use the same trigger as we did here. So we can copy and paste this one user dot trigger and plug in the shell eject trigger. So that's good as well. And the last thing we need in here are the tracers. So let's set those up as well. And we can do uh, a lot of the same stuff again. So let's just copy this, get rid of the actual variable here. And we need the muzzle so we can get rid of the shell eject socket. Now we can copy and paste it again. So I'm going to add a new pin to the sequence node and plug it in over here. So we want to spawn our tracer system. So that's a variable. We can simply plug it in over here. And we want to spawn it at our muzzle socket. So plug that in over here. We can promote it to a new variable now. So that's our Niagara system tracer fx. And let me see for this one. Uh, first, let's set up the trigger. So let's duplicate this one again. And this is our tracer trigger. So we want to set it to false over here. And then get a second setter and the getter again. Hook up the not boolean. And plug those in. There we go. And now we want to set the impact positions so we can set a vector array. So we're going to drag in our tracer fx over here. And we're going to set a vector array. So Niagara set vector array. And this time we want to set our user impact positions. So again, I'm going to copy it for you guys user impact positions so this one and uh, for this we can simply plug in our impact positions and then we want to trigger it again and we can do that in the same way so we can simply duplicate these nodes or this node actually and we need to plug in the correct trigger so we're going to get our tracer trigger and our tracer system and plug those in and that should work as well. So there is one thing that I didn't do, and that is uh, change the impact positions array to a tracer array. So uh, for the tracer, that doesn't really matter. But later, we need to set things up uh, for impact fx. So if we don't hit anything, if we fire straight up in the air, we need to uh, have different arrays. But for now, let's skip that and uh, let's see if this is working. And then we can update that in the next video. So uh, the last thing I'm going to do now is add a new pin to the sequence over here. 
and I want to add a retriggerable delay. So look for retriggerable delay. Plug that into the last pin. And let's put it all the way down here. So we're going to grab uh, all three of our systems. So our muzzle flash system, our shell eject system, and our tracer system. And we're going to drag over here and type uh, is valid or is active. No, is valid. So drag over here, is valid. Oh, really? And you want to get the green one, is valid. And then we're going to hook it up to a branch. So get a branch in here and get an OR node in here. So click the plus sign, so we have three pins, and then we can simply hook all three of them into the OR node. And we're gonna hook this up to the branch. And if this is false, we're gonna destroy the blueprint because it's not been used for a while. And we can hook this back into the retriggerable delay. So we have a loop over here and then I'm going to set this delay to something about three seconds. So after all the systems died out, we can wait for a little bit to see if we can still reuse the blueprint and spawn new systems. And if not, we're going to delete it if it's been inactive for a little while. So this is the setup. Now we can compile and save it and something went wrong. So we need to plug in the tracer fx over here so the system is valid is active and now maybe this should work so there's no error so maybe we got lucky so we're going to go back to our hero base character and inside our server weapon fired we need to spawn our new blueprint so uh, again i'm going to grab myself a sequence here and we can set up our tracer and impact positions over here. So let's do that first. So I'm going to create a new local variable and that's the local muzzle position. So create a new local variable, local muzzle position. And that's a vector. So we're not going to necessarily use all of these variables in this episode, but just uh, want to make sure that we have them set up. So I'm going to grab a setter for my muzzle position over here. And then I'm going to drag in the weapon mesh component from the character. And we're simply going to get the muzzle socket. So we're going to get a socket location. And we can plug in the muzzle socket from our variables. So muzzle socket over here. And we can store this in our local muzzle position. Hook this up to the first pin of our sequence. And then we're going to set up the arrays that we need. So let's create those first. Uh, we need an array for the tracers because we want a tracer for every bullet that we fired. And we need a separate array for impact positions because uh, obviously if we shoot in the air, we don't have an impact. And uh, we also might not have impacts for every surface that we hit. So we want to make sure that we separate those. So first of all, I'm going to create local variables again. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And the first one is the local tracer positions. So let's call this tracer positions. And that's an array of vectors. So vector is fine, but turn it into an array. And then we also need the local impact positions. So let's duplicate it. And this is our impact positions. And then we need impact normals as well. So let's duplicate it again. And these are our impact normals. And the last one we need are the surface types. So let's duplicate it again. And these are the impact surface types. And we need to change this into the e-physical surface. So e-physical surface. Oh, come on. And that's all the way down here. So the enumeration physical service, and that's also an array. So with those set up, we can grab a for each loop over here. And we're going to plug in the hit results from the input. Then we are going to break the array element that comes out of here. And we want to know if this is a blocking hit or not. 
So that's really all we need to know. So we don't need to expand it. So let's grab a branch over here, hook it up to the loop body. And if this is a blocking hit, we want to add it to all of the arrays. And if it's a not a blocking hit, we're only going to add it to the tracer positions. So let's drag in our tracer position array first and let's uh, add one to it. So add and hook this up to the false pin. So we do need other variables from here. So let's expand it again. And we're going to hook up the trace end in case we didn't hit something. So this is not a blocking hit. And then for the true pin, we want to add uh, our local tracer array again, because we always want a tracer. So we can simply uh, duplicate it. So this time we want to plug in the location and not the trace end. And then we want to add it to the impact positions array as well. So we can simply duplicate this one. Drag in the impact positions array. And for this, we also want to put in the location so we can simply drag it in as well. Then we want to add it to the normals array. So plug it in here as well. Impact normals. And replace that. And this time we want to hook up the normal from the uh, hit structure. And the last thing we need is the physical service. So let's drag it in as well and get an add node. And we want to get the physical service from the physics material here. So drag off the physics material and you get the surface type. Oh. And the surface type is the physical surface. So we can plug that in over here. And now we have the arrays set up and good to go. So we can move on to the second pin of the sequence node. And this is going to be pretty similar to what we did for spawning the Niagara system itself. So first of all, let's get a spawn actor from class node. And we want to spawn our blueprint weapon FX. So weapon FX. And now we have all of these variables that we exposed on spawn. So we need to make sure that we set those. So we're going to drag in our weapon mesh component from the character and plug that into the weapon mesh. And the rest we can get from our normal variables that come from the data table. So we can grab our muzzle flash of X and the tracer, our shell eject mesh. And we have our sockets over here. So muzzle socket eject and that's good to go and let me see we want to spawn this simply at a location that doesn't really matter so we're simply going to make a transform and we can leave it at zero that's fine then we're going to promote this to a variable and call this the blueprint weapon fx and then we're going to attach this to a component. So let's drag off here again and look for uh, actor to component. So attach actor to component. And we want to attach it to our weapon mesh. So drag in your weapon mesh component. And we're going to keep relative. That's fine. So we don't need to set anything else in here. And with this done, we can simply call our weapon fired function. So we can drag in the variable from the blueprint weapon of X and call our weapon fired. And over here, we're going to plug in our array of tracer positions. So not impact positions, but tracer positions. And also hook this up. Uh, oh, we need to create an is valid node over here. So let's drag in our new blueprint weapon of X. And we're going to check if this is valid. So we're going to hook this up to the sequence node. If it's not valid, we're going to spawn one. And if it's valid, we can simply call the weapon fired function over here. So that should work as well. Uh, we need to go into our event graph. If we have an event for switching weapons, we need to make sure that we set our blueprint weapon fx back to undefined. So that way, if we fire the new weapon, it will be forced to spawn a new blueprint with the correct uh, variables. So I'm looking for my switch weapon event, and that's over here, weapon switching. 
So all I really need to do is make sure that somewhere in here I set my blueprint to undefined. So I'm simply going to drag in the blueprint weapon FX and set it back to nothing. And that should make everything update. So let's have a quick little run through uh, on how everything is working and then we can test it. So we can fire our weapon and then we can call our server weapon fired event. We pass on the array with hit results. We uh, fix up our array with impact locations and stuff like that. Then we check if we have a valid weapon FX blueprint. If we don't, we sp uh, spawn a new one with the correct variables for this weapon. Uh, we attach it to the weapon mesh and then we call the weapon fired event on the blueprint and that will spawn the correct Niagara systems and trigger them. And then this will also keep track of the Niagara systems and if none of them have been active for 3 seconds then it will delete this blueprint altogether. And then we end up back here if we fire the weapon and this won't be valid so it will spawn a new one. So this is how it's working and if you wonder why I set it up like this then let me show you this little blueprint over here. So this is the weapon blueprint from the Lyra starter game and this is just exactly what we did pretty much. So they have a fire event in here that's being called, then they store all the impact positions and the impact surface, the muzzle position. They check if they fired a shotgun and if they did they add fake projectiles. And then they simply run a sequence. Over here they spawn a blueprint for the weapon fire effects, which is the one we just did for the muzzle flash, the shell eject and the tracer. And then they call the fire event on that blueprint and that has a sequence and that spawns the Niagara systems and keeps track of them and deletes the blueprint when it's done. So uh, I didn't come up with any of this logic. <laughs> I just copied it from the Lyra project and made some small changes wherever necessary. So uh, yeah, that's where the logic is coming from. Now let's have a little look if this is working. So let's save everything. And let's set it to a two player uh, viewport. So there we go, host a game and let's search a game as well. There we go. So there should be a few enemies in the map as well, so we have something to shoot at. So let's see, client first, I can see my own tracers, I can see shell ejects, so I think we are good to go. I can see muzzle flashes, so that's working as well. Let me get rid of that guy. So I switch weapons and this time, oh I don't have my shotgun equipped. Okay that's too bad, well let me switch to the pistol and see if the rifle mesh is changing or the shell eject mesh. And it looks like it is. It looks like a really small shell eject, so that uh, seems to be good. So let's have a look at the server over here. We can fire the weapon. We can see our own FX. And I think the client can see it as well. Yeah, definitely. So I can see shell ejects, tracers. So everything is working over there as well. So that's the first setup done. Uh, we have a few more videos to go. We're going to cover the impact of X, the impact decals, and also the meta sounds and the damage numbers. So uh, if you're interested in those, keep an eye on the channel. And for now, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.